Is America exceptional? Uh, yeah. It's uh, exceptional in a couple of respects from my point of view, in that prosperity, plenty, uh, has been a defining characteristic. Uh, we've had plenty of free land. We've had, uh, in effect, a, a virgin continent. Uh, and everybody understands that there were natives here and we treated them badly. But there were, there, we've just been exceptional in at least the regard that we are very, very prosperous, that we have a prosperous history that really no other country has. So it is our, the, uh, the uh, exception, you know, of American exceptionalism right. is basically is a uh, greater financial success right. in there's, a shorter there's, period of time. There's a wonderful book by a guy named Potter uh, called The People of Plenty, which details this idea that, that we have, we've lived our lives, social, political, and so on, uh, in the context of prosperity, uh, we don't have a deep history of rising out of, uh, you know, terrible economic uh, medieval circumstances. Mm. We're, we're a country uh, of, say, post-1700 uh, with a rise on a worldwide basis of prosperity, but we, we, never, we never had the prior experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, now you have, uh, so the, uh, prosperity, I suppose could be called a virtue. Um, the, and America is generally talked about, particularly in the beginning of America, if you read some of the stuff the founding fathers were saying, right, that this was a very virtuous place in an inherently good nation. As you've already pointed out, we were terrible to the native Americans and continue right. to be terrible to the native American. Mom and I just went to Lowe's supermarket. They had some of the, some of the staff working there dressed up headdresses, right? And it was all, you know, obviously all white people. Right. Right. And uh, they seemed pretty oblivious to how offensive it was. Um, so certainly the, the, that mistreatment existed back then, uh, continues to, and it's not just the Native Americans. It's, um, uh, Mom and I are Jewish, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, not always great. Not always great. Although there has been a decent amount of financial prosperity. I think that's one of the things that makes Jews difficult to understand. Um, but currently, number one target of, uh, of hate crimes in this country uh, and obviously, um, African Americans have uh, pretty much pretty much been pretty bad for them, uh, all the way up until Barack Obama got elected, and obviously that ended racism in this country. <laughs> no. Uh, anyway, I think you, what you don't understand is that the prosperity that I'm talking about is the direct cause of the oppression of those people. For example, people came here in Virginia, in the Virginia colonies. By the end of the 1600s, they had understood that there was plenty of opportunity here and that if they could get somebody to work, and they couldn't, their workers were very, very rare. You had to get them from Europe. And why would someone come to Europe to become a worker for you? Well, that led directly to the institution of slavery. Uh, it was the prosperity that tobacco, rice, other crops uh, made possible that led the, the elite, the white elite, the colonial elite, to turn to slavery. There was no intention in the beginning uh, to have a slave society. It was the prosperity that slave society could produce. Uh, and the same goes for the Indians. The Indians were on the land, uh, free land. Where... There are guests grimacing now. You should be calling them Native Americans. Well, at the time they were called. Yeah, it's certainly they were, true. They were called natives and so on. Uh, and the interaction between those tribes uh, and the colonists was such that uh, it became clear that a factor in the prosperity was to drive them off this land, uh, to drive them west, and and to. Uh, there is is there considerable primary evidence of this? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, Jackson's Indian policy would be the most notable example, and that was that, that white people simply wanted the Cherokee lands, and the idea was to remove them. And the federal government, acting as an agent for those, those white people who wanted the land, passed the law, the removal law, that drove the Cherokees from Georgia and North Carolina and elsewhere across the Mississippi mm -hmm. uh, to so-called reservations and and the the whites moved in took over the land 
And, and so it was really the... They call it, that, as I understand, ethnic cleansing. Well, it, 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 other than the fact that they did not kill them, as a matter of course. Ethnic Many cleansing died. Is, is, is different from genocide. It does not yeah, require yeah, their death. Uh, yeah, that's true. And and it uh, it, it really did a, a And many of them that. died. But, it, but I think the one thing that you have to see, and, and probably a really good argument, is that all ethnic cleansing has some sort of economic base where one group sees uh, the possibility of becoming incredibly prosperous if they could just get rid of mm -hmm. yes. uh, okay. uh, these people, and Jews, for example, in Europe, yes. that, that's, that's helpful there. Uh, and also, I think, uh, the, the, the one that really is interesting is to create a slave labor force uh, to produce the products that produced uh, wealth, uh, most notably cotton. Cotton's the one that, that rises up in everybody's mind, but, but rice and indigo and, and other products were very, very profitable uh, if you had the labor, cheap labor, uh, to produce those products. And, and, and if we're gonna get on to philanthropy, you know, these people then assemble capital in their hands yes. through Indian removal, through slave labor, and, and white indentured servitude for that matter. Uh, and then they are in a position, if they wish, to be philanthropic. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and they, they, I, I believe that the, this prosperity leads directly into our ability to do that. And so right. That's why I was asking about the, about the question. Just to go back to it, though, and the, accept, the concept of exceptionalism, as you were talking, I was, it, it seems to me you're right. This, uh, in Germany, they said, if we can just get these Jews out of here, then we will be prosperous. Right? That didn't work out for, very well. Well, it, it's, it, it's very complicated. And you, the one thing you have to do, and I think this is absolutely crucial, is you have to dehumanize uh, whatever group you wish to attack. Mm -hmm. You just can't attack them as equals. These were savages we were moving Well, on. these were people who who were a negative factor in the context of German culture. Uh, they were negative. Yeah. The, the, the really key thing, I think, and I've only come across this lately, and that was that when uh, the English, for the most part, came to the New World, they refused to intermarry with the natives. They, the idea here was that this was just inappropriate from a, Christian point of view, from a racial point of view. And so the idea here was that these, uh, the only thought positive, remotely positive thought they had about the natives and to some extent the slaves was that you should Christianize them, mm. but you shouldn't intermingle with them. Mm. They were to be remain separate and to be driven away. And ethnically, cleansing is a, is a two-part uh, uh Drama. One is the maintenance of a pure ethnic uh, group, white Anglo-Saxon Americans, uh, and then the attack on another pure ethnic group, Indians, Native Americans, whatever you want to call them, uh, and uh, the uh, employment of blacks, uh, African Americans, as um, Africans in this case, uh, as, as cheap labor. Mm -hmm. But the idea was it had to be it had to be separatism. They had to be separate. You had to re the idea of a pure white Anglo-Saxon culture. But as you pointed out, like in Germany and other places, it was not. This was not. Um, America's not exceptional in wanting to create some sort of ethno pure pure state. Other folks had tried that before us, right? But we, it did lead to prosperity. Well, for this country. It, 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 it it certainly did, and, and I mean. The, the wealth that was created. On top and, of something very, very unvirtuous. Oh, absolutely. And, and, uh, and it was simply, I mean, if you go back and you try to think, how prosperous would America have been without slave labor? It would have been much less prosperous. Mm -hmm. How prosperous would America have been without driving the Indians off their land? Much less prosperous. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but the fact is, uh, our prosperity is a clouded uh, reality. And Indeed. That, and that's about it.